I've always wondered to myself, is there something that helps the entrepreneurs that succeed that they have which other entrepreneurs don't? Is it something they know? Is it how they run their businesses? Is it the people they hire? Is it where they went to school? Is it their socialization, their background, their education, their mental spaces? What is it that makes the entrepreneur succeed? Welcome to my masterclasses where I share with you everything you need to know about how to become a high growth, high scale entrepreneur. I'm joined by guests. We break down the myths, the ideas, the lids, the legends, everything you need to know to become a high growth entrepreneur. Warning, this is the High Performance Zone. Um, I was given a call by a former top billing presenter, Dumisho Maja. Mm. So this is where the power of celebrity or endorsement comes in, because he, he took a product from Mr. Price and put it at a level, he's, he's, he was in top billing, was on uh, the wild, he was uh, um, ambassador for other premium brands. So immediately he took my pro small product and put it there. Um, and then I got a call from Spree, which is now Superbalist. Um, I went to start up boards. Guys, I'm studying Tom Ford and Tommy Hilfiger, and now suddenly I'm side by side with these guys in the same floor. You understand? Mm -hmm. and, and that's a bit intoxicating mm -hmm. to a certain extent because you're studying to be like them in the future, and, and God says, ah, it can happen tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And funny how I got the start up boards deal. I was, I was having a drink in Brahm, and this guy's like, I'm a buyer, and start up is like, I can put your product. I took his number, like, I guess I had and they actually did, you know. Um, but it was a terrible contract. I was young, super excited. Um, the biggest drug in the world, I think, even today is fame, you know. Yeah. Um, if in, do, do you guys smoke weed? <laughs> okay, if you smoke weed or you, you drink alcohol, fame is like that. When you wake up, you are like that. You're high already, you know. So, but it's, for me, it's always been a vehicle. I told my aunt when I was... When I was 10 years old, my first email address was decelep at yahoo.com. Mm -hmm. uh, because I've always seen fame as a vehicle for me to be able to sell anything. So with, with the name that I have right now, Mapai Sisiwa, Muzuspai are faster than someone who's not known because I have a bigger audience, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I'm speaking to, to a broader audience, which is right, right now I'm trying to break into the mainstream. I want to speak to millions right now. You know, so um, from starter forwards, um, the contract was was just terrible. I, I was in debt of something like eight hundred thousand from from that whole thing because I was taking care of merchandising of the product. Um, it was on consignment, so I buy product at the factory. I give it to them. Mm. If it doesn't sell, I they have to change it. Mm. They bring it back. Mm. Like I was in charge of everything, driving traffic into the store, in-store promotions and marketing and stuff. But it was a great learning curve because mm -hmm. when a year later when I was negotiating my, 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 my contract with Malcolm, it took me nine months to, to sign on the dotted line with Malcolm. Can I jump I, in there? Mm -hmm. Guys, I, I want you to remember this. I always tell entrepreneurs this. Remember this. Business is about this thing. R-O-E. Return on equity, not return on ego. Mm. It's a big mistake a lot of people make it. And a lot of people who get into this thing for this will make the decisions to feed this, but that's all you're feeding. It's just your ego. Mm -hmm. And sooner or later you find yourself, because I, I know this because I've made exactly this track. Yeah, uh, yeah. My number was substantially more than 800K. <laughs> but you sit back and you go, holy shit, how am I five million rand poorer? Mm -hmm. What was I feeding? Like, how did I make this decision? Mm -hmm. And I think, I think the thing about more money is that you, you lend on more debt. Ah, mm -hmm. You know, the more, <laughs> the more debt you, 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 you have. You know, when Biggie said more money, more problems, he wasn't lying. He wasn't mm -hmm. lying. It's know? true. But it's funny how we, we all think we're smart mm -hmm. up until you're faced with all these things. You know, for me, like, mostly, like I've always studied fame, guys. Like, fame is a big business. Look at Oprah. Look at Trevor. Fame is a big business, mm -hmm. right? So I've always studied it, and, and I'm like, I'm not gonna die like that soccer player, I'm not gonna die like that musician and stuff. And then when I was in the middle of it, I was no longer thinking, oh, mm -hmm. you, you understand? Mm -hmm. But but Mark, um, start of what's had to happen so that I can have a better contract. I love that. I love that. Mark, I love that. Markham, like, was so intense, guys, to a point where. Their head offices are in Cape Town, I'm based in Jobek. I'd literally fly for a five minute meeting to Cape Town because I didn't know. 
I didn't want them to cross me. Like, I, I don't want an email. I want you to say to me that this is the price we're putting on. Okay, cool. And then I can go. I, I literally had five minute meetings with them, but I made sure I don't miss a single, like a, a single factor of, of that contract. So that today, I've, I started the year on a terrible note, guys. My grand, who's been the biggest part of my story, passed on two days before the end of last year. My grandmother has never been sick. She only got sick for three months and that was it. 30 days after her passing, I got into a car crash on my way to Cape Town. Um, neck, head, and spine broken for three months, January, February, March. I couldn't do anything. I'm running a small organization. It's, it's almost dependent on me and my uncle because we're both running it, you know. So for three months of this year, I couldn't do anything. But because I negotiated a great contract last year, I was literally on a sabbatical this year. I was doing nothing. I've never put in a cent at Malcolm. It's just running itself. And they pay me, I buy product, they sell it for me, and it's just it's just that cycle. Mm. I don't put in a cent. Can I just mm. jump in? <laughs> do you know why MBAs work for people who don't have MBAs? I'll ask you that question again. An MBA is a master's in business administration. You are a master in administering businesses. Mm. Then why the fuck do you work for somebody who doesn't have it? Because theory never works in practice. Mm. There's a beautiful uh, expression you learn when you do economics. They say economists will tell you it works, just not in theory. Because economists try to fit everything in a model. So the, to the point, right? You could have read 50 books mm. about how to get into a retail outlet. Mm. You still wouldn't have known how to do it. Mm. Some things you just got to be in it. Mm. And then to lose and to burn and to go, why am I burning? Because once you burn and you lose money, you will never make that mistake again. Mm. It's called failing forward. So you're going to fail, except you're going to fail. The only thing you've got to make sure is as you fail, you it preps you for the next journey, right? So the next contract, you know exactly how to negotiate. Yeah, man. You know which clause to go to. You know which, you know which here with, there too. Man, never fall. you're willing to compromise, you're willing to not compromise at all. I'm like, saying. I really needed Malcolm because my brand was really going down because I was, I was busy with other things and stuff. But I needed it for, for, for you to just resuscitate the brand, you know. But I, I, I went in there saying I'm not willing to compromise certain things on this contract. Well, coming back to, you, to your question, you know. Um, and, and then now with Markham, um, where, 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 where am I taking the brand? Listen, um, experience has, has also taught me to be open to, to life. You understand? Um, Who's this guy? Someone tweeted about AKA's song Fela in Versace. He said, when you release an album, reason. people reason, yeah. people who choose a hit. You understand? So even when I design socks, I think this is gonna sell, this is gonna sell. People choose what what so what socks are gonna sell. So even my journey also, mm. as much as I've planned where I'm going, I'm also open to I'm sorry, I need to be dashing up. I'm also open to to, to whatever can happen in, in the way. So in, in my journey of, because the biggest thing that I realized when I started the brand is, you know, people think that the biggest part of a brand is the logo and stuff and stuff. The biggest part of having a brand is distribution. If you don't have distribution, you don't have a brand. I don't care how good and incredible your brand looks, your quality and stuff. If you don't have distribution, I'm not brand called, right? You make noise, you do whatever, but but where are you directing people? You know, I'm able to make news on a national platform with three million people because I'm directing them some way. In the midst of all this madness, I know that I'm I'm marketing, I'm I'm telling people to go buy socks at Markham stores. You understand? So if you don't have distribution, you don't have a brand. So um, I think two and a half years into my chain, I was like. Actually, I think the biggest thing of this thing is, is, is distribution. You know, distribution from, from, from manufacturing up until getting it, in, it to, to, the, to the client. Mm -hmm. I'm not so crazy about manufacturing because I've always outsourced it and it works better for me. You know, the problem is that in fact, they do quality control and stuff, they bring a complete product to me. And my, my biggest focus, I focus on what I'm good at, which is marketing the product and getting it to the customer. So after Starter Falls, I was exposed to, guys, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm exposed to the back end of this machine called the Fushini Group. So the Fushini Group 
owns Fushini, Markham and 12 other brands. Markham, their sock business is seven million every two months. Um, the entire Markham business, they have 350 stores throughout the country, which is one of the biggest uh, clothing distributors of the country uh, for men. Um, they have 350 stores throughout the country. They make three billion a year from Amachita, Aspana, e, 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 Apsa, and, and st every year. I'm an account and stuff. They make money from those. So I got exposed to that, and I think I'm not gonna confirm this and stuff. But I think my journey from 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 now five years from now, I wanna focus on on distribution. There's a lot of guys. I think I'm one of the pioneers in the in the clothing space. Well, there's been an era Abu Ma Kikip, and before that Abu Lokshin Couch and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then there was the new age of efficient and I think I'm one of the pioneers there. Um, I, I wanna be able to house everybody. I think about Tepo, about Batu, and all these guys are creating incredible products, mm -hmm. and I just wanna make sure I'm the guy who helps them get to the customers. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's a great business. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, after you, we'll take one more, and then Sobuda has to wrap. Oh, sure, thanks. Uh, my name is Lekitazi, I'm from uh, Poland. I'm based in Poets because I There's no black person from Poets. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I'm yes, sure. Yes, yes. But the thing is, in China, the Poets is a school in not a political Poets. Okay. You know, yeah. Man. Sure. I'm a government uh, teacher. Right? Okay. okay. So can I ask you one question? What's mm -hmm. your um, your role in the choosing and employment? How many people basically do you do you employ? Me, I don't have no no associations with employment. Mm -hmm. I I told you I want money. Yeah. And I'm not gonna have useless people in my organization who are not making helping me make money. Yeah. You understand? There was this and unfortunately in the way government, you know, um, people in government don't work. Their yeah. job is to make sure they said the, the, the president came out and said we're gonna create a hundred thousand jobs. So their job is to make sure they create a hundred thousand jobs, they don't know how. Whether they temper or something, but they have to clock, you know. But me now, um, I need to make money, dog. I want to drive a big car. I want to live in a big house. I want to, to live in the US. I want to make my dreams come into life. And I want to surround myself well, with people who are going to get me closer to my dream. So the biggest mistake I did was when the money started coming in, I, I, I unfortunately, I think Uvusi can afford being here, but me now too. When two years ago, I couldn't afford being here. I got an office here at Sino Steel, biggest office ever. I employed people because it was that time. Yeah, that's what I was told. You know, if you're an entrepreneur, you need a big team, you need this, you need this. You know, I was talking to the, the organizers of the summers, the South African Music Awards. They organized by three people. Sorry. Three people. With laptops and cell phones. Yeah, that's it. And then they outsource everything. And then I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I can save costs also by having three key players around me, which, which, which is my, um, um, my uncle, who, who, who does finance and operations for, for the business, um, and, and myself, right? And then we outsource, I don't have the technical skill of drawing, so I, so I outsource that. Um, I've been working with John Elliott from the Creative Mind Space for the past five years right now. Um, helping them grow their business by growing my business. You understand? I outsource manufacturing, I outsource market, I outsource a lot of things because I use them on an ad hoc basis. Mm -hmm. So anything I don't use on a daily, I outsource. Mm -hmm. You understand? And Can the same thing cost. Sure. Okay, a couple of things I want to I jump in. You know this thing called job creation? It's bullshit. Now, my language is a bit strong, so I typically get myself in trouble with people from government. No offense. But there's no such thing as job creation, guys. The Chinese didn't create jobs, they created value. What job are you creating? Create value, build a business, generate revenues, make a profit, and from that, somewhere in the middle, people will get a job. 